Recently, Matt Parker and Steve Mould released a video showing how to make fractals using PowerPoint. Their method is very impressive and includes all the elements one might desire from an unconventional PowerPoint use case. However, I do have one complaint with the video, which is that their technique unnecessarily requires, as Matt Parker might say, too much effort. The approach they present cleverly utilizes PowerPoint's insert object feature to embed a PowerPoint slide into itself. Embedding an entire presentation into itself is understandably not supported, but PowerPoint inexplicably has no problem with creating a self-referential slide. If the embedded copy of the slide is set to be a linked object, the slide will update automatically each time the presentation is saved, gradually building a fractal image. Matt Parker and Steve Mould successfully used PowerPoint to create a Sierpinski triangle, but their method has a few limitations. The presentation must be repeatedly saved to increase the depth of the fractal, and with each save, the save time increases exponentially, since PowerPoint does not rasterize the vector-based images of the embedded slide. In addition, the embedded slides are always rectangular, making some fractals difficult to create. Thus, I'm afraid that professional fractal designers might not want to use this method, and should instead use a different tool that is better suited for fractal creation. PowerPoint Slide Zoom the relatively new slide zoom feature enables the creation of a summary slide that includes thumbnail images linking to the other slides in a presentation. The presenter can navigate between slides with a zooming animation, creating an original style of presentation that was definitely not inspired by competing products. Users can also drag a slide into the editor to create a zooming link to a specific slide. The link updates in real time when the target slide is edited. Now in any reasonable presentation editor, we might expect the menus to be arranged in a hierarchical structure free of cycles. But PowerPoint isn't always reasonable, and inserting a slide into itself leads to some interesting results. Using self-referential slides, we can create many common fractal images. The only limitation is the rectangular shape of the thumbnails, which makes some more complicated fractals difficult or impossible to create. Thankfully, Microsoft has anticipated this limitation and provides an option that seems to be specifically designed to allow for easy fractal creation. When a thumbnail with a transparent background is clicked, overlapping objects from the source slide are still displayed, creating a perfect fractal zoom effect. Now while I would love to end this video with a clip of PowerPoint crashing under the load of infinite recursion, it handles fractal rendering disappointingly efficiently. The zoom thumbnails are stored as pixel-based images, so each step of fractal generation takes the same amount of time, regardless of the current complexity of the fractal. However, watching Matt Parker and Steve Mould's video did give me an idea. Presentation A is embedded in presentation B, presentation B is embedded in presentation A. They show how an embedded PowerPoint can be automatically launched as part of an animation sequence. By embedding two presentations into each other, they create an infinite presentation that gets increasingly nested with each click. In theory, such a presentation would continue indefinitely until the stack of PowerPoints finally fills all the computer's available memory. But with a little modification, we can do better than just theory.